Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and El Camino, the Breaking Bad movie following Jesse Pinkman after his escape from the series finale, released a new trailer that gives us several big clues about what this mysterious film could be about. Now, I posted a preview video breaking down some preliminary details, some theories about how Walter White might have been able to survive the Breaking Bad finale, and slightly less crazy how Breaking Bad could be set in the same universe as The Walking Dead. Go check that out. But here, I'm gonna break down this trailer, shot by shot, along with some other footage from the two teasers that were released, because this is Vince Gilligan here, folks. This guy packs more detail and symbolism into two minutes than Game of Thrones did in an hour of King Branch's hollow stairs. He said so much was so little. Spoiler warning for all of Breaking Bad and for any predictions I make about El Camino that might be too accurate and ruin your life. Let's get started. Okay, the trailer opens with Albuquerque police charging past Jesse's El Camino, pulled over to the curb as he waits in the passenger seat with a gun ready. Now this would be moments after his escape from Jack's compound following Walter White's shootout in the Breaking Bad finale. Jesse stumbles up to the door of his old buddy, Skinny Pete. Last seen with Badger pointing lasers at Elliot and Gretchen for Walt to scare the crap out of them. I love that Skinny Pete is a trampoline. Of course he does, gotta spend that drug money on something. And you might notice that this whole film is being shot in a 2.40 aspect ratio. Vince Gilligan said that he was able to get a much bigger budget for this film, which includes shooting it with the same lens that they shot movies like The Revenant in. So the result is essentially a Breaking Bad epilogue with even more cinematic visuals and production value. Not bad for a character who's supposed to be killed off in the first season. Moving on. Okay, Skinny Pete looks shocked to see Jesse, like he barely recognizes a guy, or can't believe that he's still alive. Now, the first teaser release for El Camino showed Skinny Pete in an interrogation room with DEA agents asking about Jesse's whereabouts. Because I've been watching the news, same as everybody else. I seen that little cage of his they kept him in. I heard about what all they did to him to make sure he kept cooking. But in the more recent teaser scene that was released, the news actually did not include specific details about the shooting, that the infamous Heisenberg was there, or that it was at the compound where most of the blue meth of the Southwest was being cooked. By the way, a neo-Nazi gang that imprisoned Jesse to cook for them. A horrific scene with multiple victims. It started when neighbors reported hearing hundreds of gunshots fired. When Albuquerque police arrived, they discovered the bodies of nine male victims. Oh, and by the way, if you go back to count in the Breaking Bad finale scene, those nine victims are Todd, Jack, Kenny, and gang members Matt, Lester, Franklin, the other dude first seen in the adjustable chair, and the guard at the gate who was outside at the time of the shooting. That makes eight plus Walt, nine. So sorry if you're one of the conspiracy theorists who believe that Walt somehow survived the final episode. And yeah, I do include part of myself in that because I definitely entertain the notion. But I'm still holding on to hope that Blue Meth created the Walking Dead zombies. Anyway, the fact that those details were left out of the news, unless more reports had come out with more details, that might be how these interrogators catch Skinny Pete in a lie. Let's move on. Oh, that's the way these things go. So my okay, we gotta talk about the music here. This track is called Black Water by Ruben in the Dark from their Funeral Sky album. The song's composition is that of a church hymn with organ instrumentals and in the lyrics, allusions to baptism, redemption, cleansing oneself of guilt, embracing mortality. And interestingly, Jesse's return here, if you think about it, is definitely striking some parallels with the return of Jesus in the New Testament, post-resurrection. And I'm not just talking about Jesse Christ's beard and shaggy hair here, though those are helping. His his body is covered in scars, just like Jesus' body from his scourging. Jesse, like Jesus, is known for his extreme suffering, being the ultimate scapegoat, and having an innately peaceful soul that gets taken advantage of by demonic temptations. And after his supposed death, this criminal seemingly resurrects to his former disciples, who stare at him in disbelief, like doubting Thomas's. Badger even takes off his beanie as if to show a kind of reverence. So I think the intent here is to reframe the events of Breaking Bad from a cop tale about the tragic fall of a morally bankrupt devil to a tale of resurrection and redemption of a suffering Christ figure who still has unfinished business. On to the next clip. Changed, so I look. 
Here, Jesse showers off the grime, of which there's a lot of it, and the lyrics of the song frame this moment as a deeper cleansing of the soul, washing away the guilt of his slavery for Jack's gang, and restoring himself to a more active and complete hero. I like the detail that Jesse brought the gun with him into the shower, as if he was so out of it he didn't realize he was still clutching it. Also, he probably still feels pretty paranoid and insecure, like at any moment his freedom could still be snatched away from him again. And let's not forget, this is a world where meth cooks are at constant risk of getting offed while they're in the middle of showers. Next clip. And I found grace in the water bathed my soul until my heart Okay, after Jesse cleans up and heads back into the world, there's a quick shot, familiar location. This is the river where Walt shot Mike in season five. Actually, if you look closely at the two figures standing there, that appears to be Mike actually joining Jesse. Those two cars in the background are Mike's New Yorker and Jesse's old red Toyota Tercel. And Jonathan Banks did confirm at the Emmys that he would return in this film. But based on their cars, I'm guessing this is a flashback. Like maybe this is an old meeting place of Mike's and he showed it to Jesse in some past moment, maybe hiding something there for Jesse to find if he was ever in a tough spot. Then we see a picture of Andrea and Brock that Todd pinned up in the meth lab to threaten Jesse into cooking for Jack's gang. In the background, it appears that police are still examining this crime scene. Maybe they notice this photo as a clue for where Jesse might be headed next. Moving on. I told you so. In this section, there's a shot of the El Camino as it travels through the New Mexico desert. Now, notice that the back canopy has been pulled over, where in other shots, the back of the car was opened up, suggesting now that Jesse might be carrying some cargo, maybe planning to sleep in it for a long trip. But actually, in the teaser scene that was released at the very end, in the rearview mirror reflection, you can almost make out something or someone moving in the back of the El Camino behind Jesse. Now, of course, it's not clear whether this wide shot takes place after Jesse's escape or while he's still with Jack's gang, because the next shot shows him digging in the desert with the same clothes and hairstyle that he had while a prisoner in the Breaking Bad final episode. He appears to be digging a grave because in the foreground, it looks like human hair from a corpse wrapped up in a rug that he intends to bury. Now, my depressing guess is that this could be Andrea, whom they forced Jesse to watch Todd murder and now, perhaps to add even more insult to injury, Jesse has to dig her grave and bury her. In the wide shot of the hills, there appears to be someone standing beside Jesse. Could be Todd or Kenny, another member of Jack's gang, to make sure he does the deed. And before I move on, there's a shot of Jesse looking for something in an old house. I thought that might be the old white family home that Walt revisited in season five, episode nine, after it had been ransacked by vandals. But the carpet and fixtures look pretty different. Let me know where you think this is. Let's move on. I'm begging, please, I need this soul. Okay, here there are some time-lapse shots of Albuquerque and shots of Jesse sneaking around a neighborhood. But then, amazing, a deliberate callback with Jesse and this beetle. Now, this is a nod back to the moment in season two, the amazing Peekaboo episode, which opened with Jesse meeting with Skinny Pete and briefly touching this beetle by his feet. It was a moment that revealed Jesse's inner gentle spirit, which always made murder such an earth-shattering thing for him. By contrast, when Skinny Pete walks up, immediately crush the beetle without a thought. Throughout the Breaking Bad series, bugs often had some greater thematic significance. Like this beetle foreshadowed the death later that episode, with the meth head Spooge getting crushed by the ATM. Then famously in season three, there was the fly representing Walt's paranoia over contamination and a metaphorical fly in Walt's ointment of his relationship with Jesse, with Walt's guilt over Jane poisoning their partnership. Then in season five, there was a tarantula caught by the boy who witnessed their train heist whom Todd murdered, and just like the tarantula, the boy's body was later stuffed in a container. And throughout season five, Walt covers up his cooking by doing it in pest extermination tents, reflecting how he was efficiently killing off his competition. So by returning to this beetle moment, El Camino appears to be reminding us of that peacefulness inside Jesse before he was sucked into Walt's darkness. There's also a point of view shot on a crane magnet in a scrapyard, perhaps the one owned by old Joe, who crushed the RV into a cube for Walt and Jesse. There's a shot of someone, maybe Joe, in the office seeing a news report of Jesse Bruce Pinkman. Perhaps Jesse will need to go back through his junkyard to find something that might have been left inside the RV before it got crushed. Whatever Jesse's looking for, it looks as though it's taken him back through his memory lane of his story arc throughout Breaking Bad, working with Mike, his time with Andrea, disposing of evidence with Walt, etc., etc. Next clip. More than you. 
Okay, Jesse, now wearing Skinny Pete's beanie, sneaks through some residential complex. Beside him is a room blocked off with police caution tape. Then some more shots show Jesse using a lighter to search this messy room. And then shots of tanks of chemicals emitting a flame, perhaps being set up to explode. Maybe Jesse went back to Jack's lab to torch the place and destroy any evidence that he might have left behind. And then there are more shots of police and crime scenes suggesting that El Camino will continue the whole cat and mouse game of Breaking Bad. Maybe Jesse, as the one survivor of the crime scene at Jack's compound, will be the suspect that the cops pin all these deaths on. This guy cannot catch a break. Let's move on to this final clip. You ready? Okay, this is the big mystery of the trailer. Who is the mystery man in the gunslinger pose facing Jesse asking, You ready? Now the voice doesn't sound too much like Walter White. Others are saying it could sound a bit like Ed, Robert Forster's character, the vacuum repair guy who makes people disappear for the right price. But then again, Jesse missed his chance to disappear and uh, you ready doesn't really sound like Ed to me. However, if you remember, Mike Ermintrout once said you ready right before killing one of his coworkers in season five. Are you ready? This is my but I want to know from you guys, do you think Jesse is ready to die here? And who do you think he's talking to? Comment down below with your thoughts, hit that like button, and subscribe to New Rockstars for breakdowns of everything you love. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Boss. Thank you for watching, and uh, Jesse's got to be talking to Bill Burr there, right? Yeah, it's got to be him. Sounds just like him.